Cuckoo's Podcast. Free Cuckoo's Podcast. Free Cuckoo's Podcast. Free Cuckoo's Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Three Cuckoo's Talks <laughs> Doctor Who. Season 10, episode 1. So, Mark, this was called The Pilot. It was. Um, my name's Rob. This is Mark. Hi. Hi. He's down He's down there tonight. I know you. We're not together. It's weird. We're on Skype. So if you don't True. work or it looks shit, well, just blame Rob. Never it's, mind. Blame Rob's <laughs> wife. <laughs> I don't know that once a week. So just before we go into this review... Let's make it quite clear. Me and Mark aren't exactly the hugest Doctor Who fans recently, anyway. Mm. Go on, Mark. Fill us in on your little background. So I've probably seen every episode of Doctor Who up until Sylvester McCoy stopped doing it. <laughs> because when I was younger, my next door neighbour was Tom Baker's stunt double when he was Doctor Who. She worked for the BBC. So he had like bookcases just covered in VHS videos. and I've, So I've seen them all. But then I stopped watching it. I watched a couple of Chris Freckleston's. I watched a bit more of David Tennant, but I didn't yeah. really like. I watched one of Matt Smith, didn't like him, and I've not watched any Peter Capaldi until today. <laughs> Whereas I used to watch it as a kid, and it used to scare me to death. So then, when Christopher Eccleston took over, that's when I started watching it. And then when Peter Capaldi came in, I kind of just fell out of love with it a little bit. Um, and you can get that really horrific bad episode, like the one with Kylie in it. <laughs> that was David Tennant, though. That was David Tennant, and it was awful. It was terrible. Um, it was but anyway, it's just my opinion, obviously. Um, so I thought, season 10, let's get in. And we've even had a request to review this, Mark, haven't we? That's why we're doing it, everyone. It's kind of why we're doing it. Because you wanted us to. We know nothing about a... Doctor Who. This is going to be shit. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was you an now. incentive. Yeah, it was an incentive <laughs> to do it. So remember, if you're watching this or you're listening to this, we are not like it. Doctor Who fans. <laughs> like, we're not, this is not going to be a massive geek out like you yep. f- fucking nerds, all right? <laughs> this is going to be an honest opinion. We can't, truth, have, we can't have Tim doing it. He's our third cuckoo. One, he's had a Tim baby. Like Two, he hates Doctor Who. Can't even With watch it. Can't stand it, can he? Low budget. <laughs> even though he likes it's, Firefly. Wank. It's... It's not low budget. It's not low budget. I think it was really well done this week, actually. He's a TV snob. Anyway, so, <laughs> let's not go there. So, new series, fresh start, new episode. It's called The Pilot. Yeah. Okay. So, it's a nice place to jump in, I felt, as well. And I thought it was a proper, like a like a one-off. You know, like the X-Files used to do the Monster of the Week. There's a reason why they used to do that. And I've forgotten why. Someone told Ooh, me yeah. the other day, no, TV programs of that era. Yeah. There was a, there's a reason why they used to have like Monster of the Week and not an overarching story, but I've forgotten why. So it's go. probably so that the neutral can just jump it wasn't, in. That, it so. wasn't out to do with that. I can't remember why. Oh, that's right. It's because of all the video on demand stuff. That's so it is. People can now watch stuff Netflix, Amazon yeah. Prime, all in of the order. internet, BBC iPlay. It didn't have that then. So they had to do it with basically like the, like, like the X Files, one off episodes so that people didn't get lost in the story. There you go. There you go. So now we can have these long, winding stories that we have, like Broadchurch, Noige, um, because people can watch it on demand and go back. Every day yeah. is a school day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bit of TV um, history. Nothing Doctor Who related here. <laughs> so obviously, we go in and we see Bill for the first time. The new, what you call him? The, the new companion. Her. Yeah, Pearl Mackey, her name is, mm. in real life. Um, a star of the stage, Mark. Oh, is she? A thespian. Alas, poor Yorick. So, so is David Tennant, though. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Makes the best actors, doesn't it, I guess? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this was called The Pilot. You thought it was scary, didn't you, Mark? <laughs> I thought you were scared. I thought it was... I thought, I, I thought now, it was too scary to have on at, like, six o'clock on a Saturday night when kids are watching it. Well, I watched it with my little <laughs> ten-year-old girl. So for me, it was it was Ace watching her as well. I think that was half of it for me. It was beauty. <laughs> this car just drove fast behind you. Did you see that? Yeah, it was like um, <laughs> UFO lights. It was brilliant. <sighs> I did that. It was an added effect. That's quite cool. Um, that. So yeah, so we start. Bill is turning up to the doctor's lectures, and he is in a Bristol University, Bristol, and he's been there for like fifty years. Did he say fifty? That's it. He, he said fifty years. I'm sure he did, and he settled. And he, he obviously promised somebody at the end of last series, which we didn't watch. I missed the first um, couple of minutes, so I'm making a crisp, buddy. I must that he, 
flavor crisp. Oh, <laughs> cheese and chive. <clears throat> oh, right, worth it. Um, so yeah, he promised somebody he wouldn't time travel. A time lord. He's a time lord, Mark. Yeah. That's what he does. That's so all he is. Oh, I see. So what do you without so no traveling. One, so no dude is a bit pissed off. Exactly. Because he's a time lord. He's basically sat in Bristol for 50 years. Yeah. And it's he's, a bit shit, isn't it? Well, no it is, isn't it? that, do they? Not exactly a payoff, is it? So it turns up, it turns out that Bill has been going to his lectures. She's not even at the university. She's a dinner lady. She cooks she hands chips. Out chips. It's a big you. girls and cues. Give her the wink. Hey. Extra portion love, for you. I love giving her chips, but then she made a fact. But you know, more cushion for the push. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a kid's show. This clearly it, a kid's show. Not. Hi, kids. Ask your mum. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask him, Mum. So she sees this girl from across the hall. Their eyes meet across a hall full of chips. Hang on. She's just, hang on a minute. Well, How quickly are you going to jump ahead here? I like reviewing kind of broadly, you see. That is broadly. You're skipping like <laughs> half an hour at programme. <laughs> Go on, then. So Go she on. ends up in his office, doesn't she? Yeah. And he says, uh, I've seen you in my lectures. And she don't come to the university. And then it says he's going to be a private tutor. So yeah, he she's does. Got to turn up like... at six p.m. every night. After hours, that I don't think I could do that. After hours, in yep. a private tuition. Oh. Yeah, and then I think they said it was over a course of a year. It was over a whole of... school year. Yeah, there's a musical montage. You're the best around. around. She gets him a rug for Christmas, Mark. It was hey? nice. You don't don't get that off many women, do you? A nice rug. Um. He felt a little bit guilty at was that point that he didn't get her anything. <laughs> I apologise, ladies and gentlemen, for the tone that this video is starting off in. <laughs> so, yeah, so he feels really guilty that he's not got her anything. And so he should as well. I mean, what a disgusting thing to do. He's a time traveller, for Christ's sake. So he gets a mark, what I would have thought was the greatest gift of all, and that is memories. <laughs> Memories. So she basically says to him, if you remember this little scene, that she's got no recollection of like her mum and stuff like that. She's got no pictures of when she was a kid. Because her mum died very, when she was a baby. Yeah, and she's a very, a very kind of lone person, really. So he goes back into her past, obviously, and takes loads of pictures of her, which is a bit weird on reflection. Um, Candid but, pictures. Yeah. Hiding in a wardrobe. But, quite nice and there was a photo obviously she clicked straight away that he was in one of the photos in the reflection of a mirror there's no way Doctor Who is going to do that by mistake she, she yeah she never said no did she she didn't did she nope. I think it was just you know well he's weird but she's a bit out there isn't she she's mm. um, thinking outside the box all the time oh yeah yeah what do you think to Heather then this was the woman who her eyes met across the scar stargaze room. In a bar. Yeah, that um, as well. She was very, she was good. She was all right. She was just yeah. a bit odd. She had a little star in her eye. That was cool. I thought that was a really cool little touch. <clears throat> it, poor I mean, effect. It, poor effect. It, it meant a lot to the story, though, didn't it? Yeah, it because did. Because it was the, it whole, did. the whole puddle thing. Yeah, it did. So this girl called Heather said, do you want to come see my puddle? It's amazing. Bill was always um, up for that. After we find out, of course, that she's... Um, a lesbian. Yeah, she's gay. Yeah, which, Not that that makes any difference to the story, I don't think. It doesn't. It doesn't make any... Is it the first gay companion? I guess we'll never know, I suppose. They wouldn't have touched on it way back when. No, no, um, no, no. I suppose... Um, what's his face from... Um, i trying to think of his name now. John Barryman. He was quite Captain gay. Captain Jack. Captain Jack. Well, he was, wasn't he? In Very the gay. Program, I think. It was in real life. Or yeah, but I think, he was I think he was meant to be, wasn't he, in Torchwood? <laughs> Oh, I told you what, that was terrible. You see, I kind of got into that. There was a, there was like a three or four part special. It was like the end of the world, and it was really cool. It was terrible. Okay. What was that one with dinosaurs in? Um. The uh, Spice Girls were in. Spice Girls. No, S Club Seven. Oh, Prime Evil. No, that was terrible. Andrea loved that. Oh, it was Nemesis. terrible. It was ace. Sorry, anyway. Anyhow. Going off kilter. So they go see this puddle. We did warn you it'd be shit. <laughs> yeah. And um, this other girl, Heather, she's obsessed by this puddle. Mm. Absolutely obsessed with it. She visits it 
talks to her. <laughs> and then one day, Mark, it consumes her. And she drowns in it. Um, and it just shows her from inside the puddle, doesn't it, screaming out. It was quite creepy, that. Yeah, I thought I it was think quite... a bit much, that. It was a bit sinister, wasn't it? It was grudge-esque to me. <laughs> I mean, that is sinister. That's possibly the sinisterest film ever. It was ever. grudge-esque with that. When she's coming out of that puddle, it was like, no, man. Yeah. Let's not do this. <laughs> and then, obviously, it gets kind of weirder and weirder because she's... Does she go to the puddle and she sees Heather in the puddle? Oh, no, she can't. She can't work out. It's her reflection, isn't it? But it but just doesn't look wrong with it. So she tells him about it, and they go and look at the puddle together. Yeah. And he, he knows says, straight away there's something It's not a reflection. Because it's not symmetrical, because a badge were missing. Yeah. No, it was on the wrong side, wasn't it? Sorry, yeah. It was on the wrong side. That's what I So, like he said, you never see yourself in a mirror. Oh, well, of course. And then at the end the of every scene where they've been looking in the in the puddle, you get the opposite. And there's like a weird voice going, we've got the pilot. No need the passenger. I've, yeah, I've got, I need a passenger. And then that hand. I, just come out. That was good, that. I like that effect. Thanks. So, obviously, while all this is going on, the doctor sometimes is in the basement of the university trying to get into like a vault with his with magic screwdriver. Matt Lucas. Matt Lucas as Nardole. What did you think of Matt Lucas, Rob? It was it was my first meeting of Nardole. I don't think I've seen him before. If I have, I've I've no recollection of him. Um he was okay. He comes out with the comedic lines as you'd expect him to do. Uh it's a very light hearted character, isn't he? But I hate I, Matt Lucas. It, is he a little bit typecast? I don't like Matt Lucas. A little Britain character. Is he always going to be a little Britain character? Yeah, I would have thought so. He is to me. I don't and like I him. Don't, I don't dislike him at all. Um, I, just I feel like he's going to be... I said before, I think I feel like he's going to be the Jar Jar Binks of Doctor Who. <laughs> you did, didn't you? Um, I don't know. I don't know where they're going with it, really. I don't think... Is he necessary? No. No. He didn't. He's never had like a servant before, has he? A robot, no. of course. It found out as one of his nuts fell out in the first scene. I'm sorry? <laughs> one of his nuts fell out on this first scene. Right. When he showed her into his office and he raised yeah. his hand like that. Yeah. One of the nuts fell out of his arm. Do you not right, remember? Okay. He kicked it under the no. sofa. Were you not watching? Oh, yes. It was me who went for it, Chris Butty. I remember that bit. Yes, I did remember that. Sorry, it was a bit of a throwaway scene, was that, wasn't it? No. So what was that then? Important. I think he must have been in it before, and he's been Do you think so? made as a robot or something. I don't, like I say, we never watched it before. Can't give it back, Lucas. They could have done the way with it. he's falling apart. He's just physically falling to bits. Well, it's, it's like, oh, we don't see it. TARDIS never works right. Mm. It's, yeah, it's a bit decrepit. Yeah, it's always a bit shit. Never quite well, it's goes meant right, to, does it? It's meant to blend in, as he says when he takes it to Sydney. He takes it to Sydney Harbour, doesn't he? And he said it's meant to blend in, but it's broken. Yeah, the cloaking device is broken. It's been broken since 1960-odd. Yeah. Correct, yes. Which is no time at all for the Doctor. You'd have thought um, with all his technological advances, he'd be able to fix the cloaking device of the TARDIS. Yeah, a lot of people have picked up on the CGI in Sydney was a bit terrible. A bit? <laughs> I don't focus on these things, mate. It was like... Um, it doesn't really matter. It me. was like the deer in The oh, Walking really? Dead. Oh, it was awful. Wow, that is terrible. That's terrible. a terrible comparison. It was terrible. Um, so... Now, the thing for me was, they were talking about the vault and its its big secrets and things like this. But then as soon as he got onto this story about this this water ghost, if you like, they kind of left the vault alone. Um, they tried to work out because it kept... Now, there was a scene, wasn't there, where she was in her house and there was someone in the shower. That annoyed me. And that was the bit where my little girl could watch no more. It annoyed me with that because she wrote the phone to her mother. And so she, the mother said she want in. And right. Her boyfriend wasn't there. Right. So instead of saying, oh, mum, there's someone in the bathroom, she just put the phone down on her. No, that's a... Why would you I do that? that? Was that her mother? I thought it was a flatmate. It was adopted mother. Oh, was it? Right, yeah. okay. Why would you put phone down? Um, it, oh, Why would you oh. not go, ring police, help me, there's someone in the flat. <laughs> Oh no, yeah. I'm just gonna grab a brolly. That was See, scary with the fucking eye in the plug hole. That yeah. was scary. That was cool, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and it was good. 
like you said, that was a little bit grudge and like who's where and I like all that sort of stuff in films. I think that's really cool, really creepy. My little girl was hidden behind a cushion at that point. Yeah. She thought it was Ace. But she loves it. You know, kids love all that scare stuff. So she runs out of the flat. Yep. She runs to the university. Yep. And she runs into Heather. Dripping wet. Yep. In the grounds. That was pretty scary. The way but she was kind of floating towards her. Yeah, well, every time she moved, each other, weren't they? every time she walked, but she was walking and Heather kind yeah. of floated. That was pretty scary. Oh yeah, like she was on some kind yeah, of skateboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then she just like went. Ah! And started chasing <laughs> her. It was. So I then she thought, up. Actually, this is quite scary. But yeah, like six she... seven o'clock, and as I've said, six o'clock and seven o'clock. I thought it was pretty creepy. I thought it was really well done. Actually, but then when you go but... back and you think of like one of my favourites is Weeping Angels. Yeah, that's proper creepy. Is that? That's really... They're great at the Weeping yeah, Angels. They're really scared. For kids. I think it's brilliant, don't you? You know, what time does your lad go to bed? My little boy? Yeah. About seven. How old is he? Uh, five. So he could be watching Doctor Who? Yeah. It's pretty scary for someone of his yeah, age, it isn't is. it? Yeah, it's, oh, that'd give him nightmares. Yeah. This episode would have given him yeah. nightmares, I'm sure. He doesn't really have nightmares, but then he doesn't really see this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, obviously then she goes into the doctor's office. And it's flowing under the door, isn't it? It's yeah. all coming in under the door. Yeah. That was really clever. I like that. I thought it was attached to her, which clearly it was, wasn't it? But he wondered if it was anything to do with the vault. Yeah, yeah, that's what he was wondering. Is it here for the vault or is it here for you? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so he started testing it. Let's get in the TARDIS. What did you think of her introduction to the TARDIS? Because Matt, Matt's Lucas's character, Nardole, was looking at that intently, wasn't he? How is she going to react to the TARDIS? I thought it was fine. It was like anybody else's, really. I thought it was fine. I like I like it when he said it's like, imagine having a small box and then having a big box. And put the big box inside the small box. She's like... She goes, yeah? Yeah. No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, that's where people usually struggle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Um, yeah. yeah. See, you it's... did like him, didn't you? No, You've warmed to him already. No, no I am. No. Just doing this review... You've changed your opinion. No, <laughs> You've completely warm to Matt Lucas. I haven't. He was terrible. What, what He's always terrible. Um, so then they get in. Obviously, she's not freaking out, really. She compared it to a kitchen, Mark. Yeah. Which was... Yeah, she did. He'd never heard that before. My little girl went, how the hell is it like a kitchen? All and the metal went, yeah. and all the dials and all that it sort was. of stuff. Um, and now you know where the toilets are in the TARDIS, by the way. Downstairs, right a bit, left a bit. Past the what? I don't know. Macaroon vending machine. Oh, that was right. <laughs> a mac- that made me laugh, did that? I thought, it's typical of the Doctor to have a macaroon vending machine. <laughs> Suddenly sales of macaroons <laughs> yeah. go through the roof on yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah. Everybody goes to bed craving macaroons. Yeah. Um, so so he yeah, shifts the targets outside. He does. And she's like, what's going on here? Yep. And she, then I like the way she's like looking at it in here, and like the doors are made of wood. <laughs> it's not very secure, is it? And then, so does it? No, does it go downstairs to the vault? They go down, no, yeah, down. they do to check it. It's all right, and then it appears in the vault. Yep. And then it's outside, and then they go to Australia. Yep, that's right. Hang on, I it was night time, and now Australia. it's day. January in. Uh, Australia, <laughs> like it won't be fucking boiling hot. <laughs> she didn't notice that. And then she was in a foreign country. And also, another thing that annoyed me about that bit was she walks out of the TARDIS and leaves the door open, and you yep. can see the TARDIS behind her through the door, and everyone's just walking past. Totally oblivious. Someone had gone in, definitely. Someone had gone in. I think. If a box had have appeared like that, I'd have gone in. I think I'd have had a quick look, wouldn't you? It were packed. It was quite heaving, wasn't it? Yeah. That annoyed me. Heaving. Um, and then, did they go across the universe at that point then? Uh, yeah. They went um, to the end of the universe, didn't they? Yeah. And then, obviously, it was there. And then they went to... Oh, and then he, he came up with a theory, didn't it? Let's take it through the deepest, darkest, burning hell or whatever. <sighs> yeah. But we've got to go through it first. So you went to the war zone, where we've been before, many times. We have. The, the Daleks. The Daleks' invasion of Earth or something. It was an ace inclusion of the Daleks, by the way. I thought it was very subtly done. The Doctor detected. <laughs> I thought he was going to bump into himself at that point. No, no. He can't bump I'd into have... himself, can he? 
I don't know. They've done I'm it not sure. A couple of times. I don't know the laws and the rules. I'm sure Something there are about plenty. The cat running into himself. But there's there's two episodes. There's one called the Three Doctors. And one called the Five Doctors. Well, that was the one with John Hurt in it, wasn't it? No, no, and there was no, no, Tenet no, no. And Smith before and John that. Hurt before that. Oh, really? In the olden days. I the, think like I can't remember yeah, if it's Davidson Patrick era. Troughton and William Arnold, John Pertwee. But there's five of them. That one's really good. And right, there's one okay. called the Three Doctors as well, which is quite good. Should go yeah. back and watch them. Really yeah, there was ones. one, obviously, with John Hurt, Matt Smith. That's and right, well, John Hurt was the original Doctor, wasn't he? He was the first ever Doctor. That's what they um, established in that one. Yes, I think so. But except he wasn't, yeah. because it was William Hartnell. And he was, Which, you want a serious Doctor? Go and watch William Hartnell. He was really serious. <laughs> Not a comedic bone in his body. Patrick Troughton was comedic. He was good. Anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, they Anyhow. went there. It was still there. And they went, so, they, yeah, they went, so it arrived there, and it's chasing them. Matt Lucas was doing something with a sonic screwdriver. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Quarantining the Daleks. Now, she had kind of figured it out before the Doctor. He was really kind of tentative. That's, that's one thing that surprised me about it, that he always knows. He always figures out who they are, what they are, doesn't he? he genuinely had no idea he had this no time, idea did he? what was going on. And then she figured it out, that she'd made this promise. Yep. Don't go anywhere without me. Promise. Promise. And that's what it, so it wanted to take her with it. Mm. Him, with her. Um, and then she kind of put it against itself, didn't it? Yeah. And then obviously she connected, saw everything, just like as a one-off. Yeah. Well, it fi- so, I guess the Doctor did figure out that it wasn't going to kill her because he yeah. said it would have just killed you then, and it hasn't. Well, it was the Dalek before it melted. Yeah. So I thought it was really good. I thought it was a really cool, scary enough episode. I like the scare episodes. I do. And then I he tried to pie her off then, didn't he? Yeah, because he, he doesn't want a companion. And he does this every time. Well, he's, done, he? he's done with the time travelling thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I don't want a companion. I'm happy doing my lectures. Um, and he changed his mind? He did. Yeah, he kind of saw what was going on, didn't he? And went, yep. ah, forget it. Mm. What am I trying to do here? Yeah. And then I guess we'll see what happens. Did you see the little coming soon? Little yeah, one? yeah. It was... Uh, the problem I had... The thing that... that it, it was literally... Just let's cram everything into this, right? Yeah. It's going to be Daleks, there's going to be Cybermen, there's going to be everything that you want in a series of Doctor It's Who. trying to draw people in, oh, isn't yeah. it? The, totally. the neutrals. Totally. And then they ended with a shot of John Sim as the Master, didn't they? Which is a huge thing for Doctor Who fans, you know, the whole... The Master's been underused for years. He should have been in yeah, far more has. than he has been. It's just, he's, he, never mind the Daleks, the, the Master is the, the Doctor's arch-rival, nemesis yeah. or whatever. And he's not been in enough, I don't think. And John Sim's really good anyway. The hardest thing must be acting against John Sim yeah, because he's, he's very brilliant. Good. He's, he's very, absolutely he's brilliant. very serious. Yeah, he he's can always be. Always really serious, but he's a very good actor. I think. I mean, I was a big fan of Life on Mars and and that sort of thing. So, you know, him he had that light and the shade in there as well. So I I thought he was brilliant in that. So it's nice to see him back. So I'm look forward to those episodes definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you can't you can't beat an episode with a Dalek or a Cyberman, you know what I mean? No, oh, we've got the original Cybermen coming back as well. The first yeah. ever ones, not the new yeah. ones. Are they the ones just made of cardboard? Like the cloth stuff <laughs> over the faces. Uh, yeah, the original oh, really? design for the Cybermen. Oh, yeah, we'll geek out a bit now. I'll probably geek yeah. out far more than I think I'm going to I was going to say he's going to start It'll digging out his VHSs. He's going to start digging out those VHSs. All the ones I've got of you, Rob. Remember. Hey, hey, you said those had never show the light of day. The ones that you and Tim made. Right, on that note. Cuckoos <laughs> extra. <laughs> Cuckoos extra. Cuckoos after dark. After dark. Bit of blue for dance. <laughs> it's just green screen. That night vision. Well, so there you go. Uh, what yeah. would you give it out of 13, Robert? Um, like I said, I love a scare. Um, I like the whole, like you said, it was a little bit like the grudge. Yeah, it was um, creepy. I liked all that. Um, I'd give it a, out of 13, are we going, yeah? Yep. Uh, a solid 10. Yeah, I'm going to go 9. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. There was All nothing right. about it that made me not want to watch the next one. Exactly. I was so that's good. Surprised. That's good. So, yeah, me too. I, I agree. I liked it a lot. And I quite liked Bill. I thought she was a good She was addition. good. Yep. Didn't mind her at all. She was fine. Definitely. I didn't mind Peter Capaldi either. No. So a big thumbs up, really, from us. Um, Just hit like. on If you're watching on YouTube, hit like. Um, subscribe. Comment, yeah, we love our comments. Yeah, love, love, love the comments. Brilliant. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Of it. 
and did the Skype work. That is the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. That'd be wicked. We'll, yeah. We would desperately really want to know what people think because I love reading the comments. Yeah, and if you subscribe, you can see what else we review. So we've watched Broadchurch recently. Um, we're gonna we're doing Better Call Saul. Yeah. Um, Preacher is going to start very shortly. Fargo That's getting as well. Soon. We're going to do Fargo. Can't wait for Fargo. Yeah. So yeah, do all those things, and we shall see you next time. Yeah, we'll see you next time. See you later, boys. Bye. Bring the girls podcast.